Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. Got a good one for you today. I am on uh, the Newport Peninsula today. And uh, on the inside part, houses that overlook the bay. People have their boats out. And uh, just going to take a stroll today with you guys and tell you about so many things that are going on in the economy. I got a bunch of great stuff to share with you guys today. Uh, just absolute economic chaos and shenanigans in the economy right now that is just unbelievable uh, to say the least. So before I get into it, uh, please take a second, please hit the like button and uh, also please hit the subscribe button. Uh, please don't forget the bell notification so you get notified of everything that we're doing. Also the Patreon channel that we have, if you'd like to reach out to me and get more access to me, there is the Patreon channel that you can sign up for. Uh, also we have an email list that you can sign up for and the link is below. Please check it out. Uh, this is beautiful. This is the backside of uh, Newport. And uh, you've got the, those are basically mobile homes over there that were manufactured houses that they built that they're getting millions of dollars for, which is absolutely insane. And then these houses are on the inside of the peninsula that goes down the main drag, Ocean Boulevard. And, uh, You've got City Hall up here and stuff like that, but let's get into it. Uh, <laughs> there is such a huge problem in the state of California with disability claims, and this is going to reverberate around the country. Uh, because of the health crisis, there were more people that filed for unemployment. They had the unemployment claims and they started to deal with the fraudulent unemployment claims. Now, it was just announced late Thursday night last week that the state of California has a real problem with its disability program and that there are 345,000 disability claims that were filed since the health crisis started uh, that are that are could be fraudulent. Now think about this. There are 27,000 doctors that are associated with this that don't exist. They cannot find the doctors. Now here's the crazy thing about this. There's only 480 doctors that they found that match the claims that they've been paying. This is unbelievable, guys. If any of you have ever gone to the doctor or needed, you know, uh, you know, uh, an authorization or we need the, uh, author the, the okay from your doctor, how somebody could get a fake disability claim, because think about this, you're disabled, you can never work again, and it is anticipated that they've paid out $4 billion of this money uh, for these claims. Uh, the state won't say the exact figure, but when you put three or four different stories together and you add it all up, that's what it totals right now. But think about this. Of all the claims, the 345,000 claims, it is anticipated that 98% of the claims that were filed here in California for people to have permanent disability are fake. Now that is your tax dollars at squandered at work, which is absolutely tragic when you think about that. That is so unbelievably sad that, that all this money is being misused like that. Now, here's the crazy thing. As I started to investigate this stuff, you've got a lot of people that did what they did with the unemployment where they were in Illinois and they found out, hey, California's writing checks. So they went to California and had these checks issued. You guys, that is insanity, absolute insanity. So now they're trying to clean up the mess. They froze all these payments. Now, here's the worst thing is that there are people out there that are broke that as we enter February, that they're waiting for their disability payment and they need that money to survive and they cannot work and they are falling victim of this and they have to verify everything. They're gonna have to verify that they were injured. They're gonna have to verify the doctor. They're gonna have to verify everything all over again. And it's absolutely tragic and chaos. And you're gonna hear stories about that, but this will reverberate to other states because as they start throwing money at the problems when this happened, they just threw it and people, oh, well, this is, this is how we take advantage of this. And they signed up for it. And it's absolutely unbelievable that that many checks were written. And think about this. So they just blanketed, froze all those people. So share your thoughts on that one, because that's sad. But you're going to see this on the with state, uh, Georgia, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, you know, Florida, a lot of states that have disability claims, high disability claims, they're going to start to review all these things and see that they are factual or not. Now, here's the other thing. Kids that graduate high school, like for example, you know, as a single parent, my kids go to college. There's certain advantages you have when you go to college 
as a single parent that you can get your kids, Pell Grants and all these different things that the kids can apply for. Uh, think about this. There are uh, hundreds of thousands of kids right now that did not get Pell Grants, that didn't apply for it. So if you or anybody you know, if you have children or you know somebody with uh, kids that are graduating high school, see if these grants are available because it's almost $3.8 billion worth of money that wasn't spent that these kids are entitled to. So again, the average person that gets these grants gets about 4,300 bucks and that pays a lot of schooling, books and things like that. And you don't have to pay it back. And again, you're entitled to this. It's not, you know, it, it, you know it's, it's something that people just didn't take advantage of enough. And uh, again, if you or anybody you know is of college age and you've got a niece or nephew or friend or neighbor or anybody, make sure that they're checking stuff like this out because I'll tell you a great story. My daughter, probably five years ago, six years ago, whenever she did this, hey, will you go with me to register? I wanna make sure I'm going to the right place and see if they want any financial information from you. So we go to the school and they're like, well, today's the last day to sign up for this. It's your lucky day. So she got free textbooks. She got all this stuff available because we walked in there. I had no idea what the deadline was, but she got that stuff. And again, most people don't know this stuff. Most people can't register this, but this is where it goes to, hey, we want copies of your tax returns. This is when we had to use the old system and you had to get registered with the IRS and they had to pull the system, pull the, uh, uh, you, you sign up for an account with the IRS, they pull your tax returns and it authorizes people to look at the tax returns when you do that. Well, they're getting rid of that system. They're gonna go to ID.me and people are freaking out about that because they, people don't wanna give their pictures and things like that to eliminate fraud. The, that's a good idea, but the problem with it is that company is complete chaotic. It's a complete mess. So share your thoughts on that one as well. Now, the next thing is rent right now. It's anticipated that rent's gonna go up 30% in most major cities, 30%. It is creating such a problem with people having to go live with other people, and that's what we're seeing. Now, you know, in a resort community like this, I don't live here, guys. I live, you know, inland about 10, 15 miles, okay? But in a resort community like this, even this place has been affected. There are places that are absolutely out, outlandish as far as the rents that they're getting here. You've got uh, the community center and all that stuff that they've got built here. It's beautiful. And they've got restaurants here. They've got the, the playground behind me for the kids with the, the uh, lighthouse and stuff. I mean, just a cool place, okay? But even in a place like this, you're seeing uh, retail get destroyed. Uh, when I was in San Diego and in La Jolla uh, this last few days, it was unbelievable how many places that were out of business in just a couple of months. And uh, the thing that has not hit yet is as of January 1st, uh, these... Uh, commercial uh, accounts that were behind can start to be reported to the public, okay? And so now you're gonna start to hear all the defaults and you're going to start to hear all the problems that people had with commercial real estate. And again, the problem with commercial real estate is I talk to people and talk to realtors, these guys aren't budging yet. They're not lowering the price yet. They're not getting desperate yet. Well, wouldn't it be better to have somebody in there for a year and pay you something? No, it'd be. It'd, I'd rather have it empty, Dan. Okay crazy that's the thinking but again maybe that's why i'm not rich in real estate so you know share your thoughts and all this stuff guys i really want to know what you think about all this stuff that the uh i was absolutely blown away with the disability because again the you know 180 billion dollars that was put to states like this has just been squandered and california i mean they don't even know how much money they've wasted right now. That's what's crazy. And here's the thing that's nuts, is right now with the Super Bowl happening in two weeks and you've got an LA team in the game, okay, a big deal. But the thing that's crazy is that they've spent money to clean up all the homeless. Uh, so when you get off a plane at LAX and you get driven to your hotel and to the stadium in the path between LAX and the stadium, there are no homeless people there. They're doing a sweep and getting rid of everybody during that time to make LA look clean. And from everything I've shown you and everybody else has shown you, it's an absolute utter mess. And uh, it, it's just not real. It's, a, it's a, a dream to say the least. So let me know what you guys think about all this stuff. Kind of a cool day out here, you know, nothing too unbelievable. But uh, if you guys ever get out here, there's, they've got uh, like the community center and they've got a place called uh, right here, the Lighthouse Cafe. It's got pretty good food, it's cheap. And, uh, but 
you're sitting on the water having breakfast and things like that. So let me know what you guys think about all this stuff. Hey guys, one thing I want to remind you about is Weeble is back with a brand new promotion. And if you open up a Weeble account and you deposit anything in the account, they will give you three shares of stock that could be worth up to $3,000. And you can also trade cryptos too. If you put even a dollar in towards cryptos, you can get $5 free in crypto. Very exciting. And uh, the link is below to sign up for this. Uh, so check it out. Next thing is the IRS. The IRS is sending out two letters that started to go out this week. Form 6419 and 6475. And these are for the child tax credit for people that are eligible for that. And also for uh, people that got stimulus payments. Now again, I've reminded you guys about this before. If you are uh, eligible for the stimulus check and you didn't get it for whatever reason, okay? This is your last chance because after the filing of this tax return, it is over with. If you have elderly relatives or parents that could have been eligible for this, now is the time to get this, okay? So you've got to sign up for this. Plus, they just uh, added to the earned income credit so that people that, they raised the amount so that people that uh, were eligible for a tax credit. Now, the, this is a refundable tax credit. If you, if you or somebody you know makes a little money, they could get this tax credit. So take a look at this and again, talk to a professional. You know, a lot of accountants and people like that, uh, uh, you know, they will give you free advice, guys. Also look at the different accounting associations. Here's one thing that we did last year at tax time was we shared the accounting associations around the country and these guys, these nerds love giving advice, okay? And again, oh, Dan, you call them accounting nerds. Yeah, I did, okay? Because the people that you want is you want the guy that lives eat and breathe or the gal for that matter that lives eats and breathes accounting and would love to help you with a simple question yes or no this is how you do it type of thing and again it's worth paying a professional to get your taxes done right now something that is absolutely crazy that i did not know existed is that you know you guys have seen all the cargo ships that i've had on countless videos okay and uh you could go out and you could sign up and you could be a passenger on one of those cargo ships as a vacation. Now, when the health crisis started, they stopped doing that. But on those cargo ships, there's generally 12 passengers that have nothing to do with the crew that you can sit there and, and, uh, and you know, go out there and, and, and it's no frills to say the least. And you're, you know, living with the crew, but you get your own room out there and you're doing that. And I am walking on a dock right now. Okay. People say I get sidetracked really easy that I think I'm not supposed to be out on. So anyways, we'll see if they throw me off. So, anyways, there's a guy named Doug Walsh. Him and his wife uh, were on an evergreen ship from, you know, the Indian Ocean. And he said, hey, after two weeks, it was enough. I wanted to get off the ship. But, again, talking about a no-frills vacation, they're trying to open these things back up to people. But does that interest you? Because I'm floored. When I go to cities like um, Santa Monica and you see the hostels and you see these little rooms or the bus company, that there's buses here in L.A., that will take you to San Francisco for a minimal fee and you basically get like a coffin sized uh, bungalow that you lay down in and sleep in and they drive you to San Francisco, stop and then you wake up and you get out of the car and it's cheap. It's like 75 or 90 bucks to do that. Does that interest you? Because it doesn't interest me at all. And uh, you know, I, I'm one of those people that could, I'm telling you if you said, Dan, you're gonna sleep right there tonight, I could sleep anywhere. Just that's how it works. But again, I don't know if I would travel and do things like that. Uh, I think that doesn't interest me. So share your thoughts on this stuff, guys. I really want to know what you think. If you'd go on one of those, you know, low-end cruise ships or, um, you know, again, cargo ships and live with the crew. You could live with Igor for two weeks. It'd be nice. Okay. Now, final thing on this little segment was uh, Super Bowl. They're talking about how it's going to cost you 14% more for your Super Bowl. Inflation's only at four point whatever percent, but we're supposed to believe that Super Bowl is gonna go up just over 14% uh, and uh, inflation's at 4.6 or whatever they're trying to sell us at. Again, I don't believe that. I have people that write me, I've got accountants, economists, all these people make predictions. I believe that our 
inflation is around 17% right now. I really do. And I also think our unemployment is about 22, 23% right now. I don't believe these numbers of everybody's got a job because if you read my email and people looking for stuff, they should just be, you know, turning deals down left and right. So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. Again, I don't know if this is the, the rental yard or the schools, but they've got a lot of little docks out here. And if they're unlocked and you walk out here until they throw you off, you know, there's really not going to hop in a boat or anything like that. So share your thoughts and all this stuff. The UK has a huge problem with inflation right now. And one thing that's about to happen is the Bank of England is about to raise interest rates for the second time. And they're talking about it's going to be the first time since 2004 that they've done back-to-back -back, uh, rate increases. They think they're going to do another 0.25%. And again, you know, for my friends in England that write me and tell me how chaotic and how insane everything is in England, and uh, it's absolutely a complete mess. And uh, they don't think that this is going to help. So we'll see if another quarter of a percent is going to do something as far as curbing inflation. Now. With that said, it was just announced that Israel has a huge problem with inflation and they're complaining about everything, complaining about food, gas, electricity, everything is a huge problem and uh, they don't see, you know, anything fixing it right now. So again, a worldwide problem that we're seeing uh, and it's just getting worse for everybody right now. But again, will the interest rates help? And again, why doesn't our Fed do something about this right now? Why don't they go out and raise interest rates today? Um, again, if the economy is booming, if everything is so good, if, you know, commercial real estate, everything else out there is just fantastic, you know, let it ride, guys. Up, up the interest rate. Because what you're seeing is you're seeing more and more stories, and they're included below, of families that have saved a hundred grand for a deposit on a house and can't get anything, can't afford it. And uh, the realtors and their uh, uh, ingenuity are saying, get more money, just get a larger deposit. So, okay, well, you come up with another hundred grand, okay? So there's that. That's what we're seeing all over the place right now is just chaos and no good advice to say the least. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. So many people are having a difficult time right now with just getting by, okay? I get people that write me about how their rent's going up 10% and they can't afford it. They don't know what they're gonna do. And between now and May, when the rent goes up 10%, they could eventually be homeless. Then you get someone like Jason that owns a cabinet shop, Pennsylvania, doing work in New Jersey, and uh, he has a problem, you know, making custom cabinets and getting drawer slides. You know, the thing that you just don't even think about when you Go to your kitchen and pull it out. The little thing on the end, that's a drawer slide. And think about this. This guy, um, for that little tiny part, could this could absolutely destroy his business because he cannot get them. He ordered them in August, and the suppliers do not have that. All these kids at the park having a good time after school programs. It's very nice. Um, but again, you know, what's Jason going to do? Now, here's the thing. I always sit down with my clients and I always say to get different, to get creative. And what you've got to do is you've got to introduce yourself. If you're in this position, you've got to introduce yourself to the managers. You've got to introduce yourself to the suppliers and the manufacturers of these large companies, even if you don't do business with them. Um, this guy sent me his website. It's beautiful. The guy does really good work. But again, get creative. Look at other suppliers. And you can sit there and it used to be, hey, go to China and look at China. But you've got to look at suppliers because there is somebody out there with drawer slides that could make Jason so that he could sleep at night and get those. And again, if you had a high-end cabinet from one of these manufacturers, do you think they don't have drawer slides? They do. And I'd like to start carrying your cabinets. We want to start buying certain parts and components and things like that. See if you can do this and, you know, be resourceful and try different suppliers. And just, just again, the thing that happens in business to all of us is that we sell a certain way, we build things a certain way, we collect money a certain way, and when trouble hits, 
what are we gonna do, okay? Well, now is the time to row differently, run the boat differently, and do things differently, and put your thinking cap on. Have people that work for you, make calls to different people, and just work nonstop in whatever you're trying to get. Now, the manufacturing problems went from, hey, we'll store a little bit to get whatever you can. This is not going to end soon. Okay, Goldman Sachs just did an article about how inflation's going to end soon, and there's an article with all these experts that came out, and, and uh, three factors on why Walters Kluwer, they're a big publishing company, talked to all these different 10 economists, and the stories are below that you can read about how inflation's going to end. And we look at past events to show you how inflation is going to end. Well, again, we've never lived through something like this, guys. What we're living through right now, this is history right now. We're living through a time when you don't have products. You have a cabinet guy that can't get drawer slides and he's got clients. He's got, he's been, he ordered them in August and he can't get them. Okay. It's not a bad businessman. It's ridiculous, but inflation's going to go away. And if you believe that you are kidding yourself, then there's Richard who wrote me and in the Denver area, and this is sickening guys, um, we have a new crime fee on your restaurant bill. What? Okay, wait, 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 what? 1% charge for uh, uh, crime sprees. Okay, no, okay? You know, I mean, put that on my bill, there'll be a crime spree. Come on guys, that's insane guys. Now, you know, I ate at a Norm's, which is a really inexpensive, uh, uh, coffee shop type place that used to be open 24 hours. Now Orms, Norms is open from like eight in the morning until like eight at night. It's ridiculous and it's the food's not that good to uh, have them cut their hours. But again, I don't understand businesses cutting their hours, but they tried to have a uh, an extra fee. And when I balked at it and said three and a half percent for what? Okay, that they couldn't explain, they took it off the bill. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys, because this is the chaos that's coming your way. So let me know what you guys think about this. Now, I for one think that the stock market is completely rigged and I don't think that you're going to see it stay down for long. They can kick it, they can knock it down, they can put a pillow over its head and I still think that you're going to see it survive, okay? The numbers that we just got today for PCE, personal consumer expenditures, this would be something that would destroy the stock market in any normal year. What is this? This is consumer prices on things, removing the volatile stuff, remo removing food and removing uh, fuel costs. So this is the gauge that the Fed uses and that the economists use. This is their favorite thing. PCE is what it's called, personal consumption expenditures. Now it went up half a percent in December. Now here's the thing that's crazy is this is in line with our 7% inflation, which I don't believe, but Mid-year, it was up one and a half percent, and then it shot up after that another, um, you know, six percent since then, guys. So it's absolutely upside down. And uh, again, if these numbers were released, you would see chaos in the markets with something like this if it was normal news. But again, you have to dig for something like this to find news like this right now. And again, I get people that say, oh, Dan, it's redundant. You know, I'm telling you, I get up every day, and I'm, am I going to make a video today? Hmm. Well, okay, guess what, guys? There's so much news that's, that's out there that is absolutely insane. Speaking of insane, McDonald's. We've all eaten there one time or another. Uh, Steve Esterbrook is the former CEO. He got a, uh, a buyout package for $40 million when they fired him last year or two years ago. Uh, he was caught having an inappropriate relationship uh, with a subordinate and the shareholders now are suing this guy saying that, wait, suing McDonald's saying, wait a second, you gave this degenerate who, uh, who was doing an inappropriate relationship, uh, an, um, which I love the article, it was a, a Mick effing, okay, <laughs> which made me read it, okay, but Again, the shareholders are upset. One of the pension funds that invest in McDonald's are livid over this. And again, it's one of those things that it's just absolute chaos. What kind of gig do you have that you get a, you get fired for being a degenerate and you get $40 million? I mean, come on guys, that is absolutely crazy. So um, the McDonald's shareholders are upset and uh, they're not gonna buy this guy a Happy Meal. So share your thoughts on all this stuff again. We live normal lives. We buy things. We buy gas. We buy food. We buy fuel. We go to restaurants. We pay for things. 
try to run our businesses and try to move things ahead. And we, it is constant challenges. And for people to say, hey, inflation's gonna go away. You're not gonna solve this anytime soon. This is going to be a problem that is going to last for a, a considerable amount of time. The only thing that I've seen truthful is that experts that say, hey, we're gonna see inflation rip through 2022 and into 2023. That seems realistic. And again, read the comments below. All the emails I get, there are now dozens of people that have sold their vehicles. Now, again, if you and your wife, you both have a car, you're not gonna sell one of the cars, okay? I understand that. You're not gonna sell your car and get a bus pass, but if you've got an extra vehicle in the house or some vacation vehicle or an extra truck that you guys bought, they are given insane money, okay? Was it a bank today? The guy got 15 grand, okay? Above the buyout of his car in cash. Wrote him a check. Okay, thank you for the vehicle so we can sell it to somebody else. It's insane, guys. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. One thing that's happened through the health crisis is, this is crystal clear, we have broken the supply chain. We just really have. It's just a complete chaotic mess right now. And when you think about your personal life, you think about the spider web of your life and getting food, energy, things to live a normal life or your business, and what it takes to run that and how it's just been completely disrupted. That's a problem right now. And we're seeing absolute chaos right now with people. And people need to go out and, and simplify their life. Now, I am not an organized person, okay? And I've learned that in my business. I am the creative guy, okay? That's my thing. I'm the marketing and I'm the creative guy. That's what I'm best at. And I excel at that. So. I do myself and I have people around me that are much more organized than me to make sure things get done and get completed. It's that simple. If people run their lives that way and have it simplified, you will do better in your own life. Now, what we're seeing with this, this great resignation too, is that we're seeing more and more people dip into their 401ks and their retirement accounts. And when the pandemic started, you could take out a hundred grand, I think was the number, and uh, you didn't have to worry about uh, uh, the, uh, the tax implications right away for it, but you had to pay it back. And again, talk to a financial advisor because I'm not giving you financial advice. But you need to understand that, that, that this is chaos. And again, I'll just draw down. I'll get it back. I'll get it back. And people sit there and, oh, I'll get more money. I'll get more things. Things will come out. And uh, there's an article below about people just, you know, tapping into that. And it's absolute chaos. And it's incredibly sad that people are doing this and, and resorting to this last result just to, to get by and pay their bills, okay? We're seeing more people use their credit cards to pay rent, to pay the electric bill. We saw over the weekend a spike in uh, uh, energy costs and uh, natural gas, okay? The, the natural gas futures went through the roof because of how cold it was. And the final thing, there was a man that worked at Amazon and he's in real big trouble. He is accused of stealing $273,000 worth of merchandise, uh, high-end computers, selling them to a supplier offline, taking them from Amazon. This guy, Douglas Wright, who's not right, he's in big trouble. He is uh, going to face 20 years in prison for stealing from Amazon. Absolutely crazy. Sold, uh, you know, high-end hard drives, uh, chips, GPUs, all this stuff. Uh, and sold it to uh, the supplier and uh, really screwed up the supply chain for Amazon and they caught him and he's going to jail. So, final thing is Domino's Pizza. This is kind of cool, okay? Whether you like Domino's or not, they're doing something that's pretty cool and that is if you want to order a pizza and pick it up, they'll give you a $3 coupon. They're called a $3 tip is what they're calling it. And basically it's a $3 coupon to use in your next pizza. Now. Again, I love Domino's, I love their thin crust, but uh, that's pretty cool because I always pick up my pizzas from that place. I never let those guys deliver it. So, you know, take advantage of that, guys. Save yourself three bucks on a pizza and uh, the link will be below on that. Uh, do not forget to hit the like button. Do not uh, forget to uh, hit the subscribe button, bell notification. Don't forget we've got the Weeble promotion and the Weeble promotion is very cool because if you set up a Weeble account, use the link below, you get three free shares of stock once you fund the account. It's absolutely crazy. And if you put anything into cryptos, they've got, I think about a dozen cryptos now that you can buy there, including Shiba Inu. Uh, they will give you $5 free with a crypto. Very cool. So sign up for that. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon. And uh, it's 
make it a good February, okay?